Oh, has the icon changed? Use the clock's timing, okay. Welcome back to Not For Broadcast. I'm um, sorry that I wasn't recording this over the weekend. I decided that I'm just going to do this on weekdays. I'm still not going to guarantee that I'm doing daily uploads, though, because I'm too lazy to... I just really like this game, and I've been playing it a lot, and that's why I'm doing daily uploads. Yeah, let's just skip to the story section. Oh, wait, what? The lockdown. Um... Alex. Oh, thank God you're alive. It's Jenny, the floor manager. Are you okay? Alex. Alex, you need to get it together. Look at the broadcast screen. Yeah. Just look at it. That's all we've been putting out since you went down. You have no to signal. Oh, what the? You're going to need a full charge to clear that many off. Oh, so. Hold down the big button until it's fully charged, and then release it to zap the little Ha 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 ha! Excellent, Alex. We're broadcasting again. They must have built up yes. one snapping. Usually it only takes a tap on the button to clear one. Look, there's a lone one climbing now. Zap it off before it starts to mess up the signal again. Aha! Uh -huh. You should have never messed with me, boy! So I just have to go. Alright. Uh. Are they coming now? Um, hang on, let me turn on the fan. What? No professionalism. It's not a mess. Everything is where it should be. It's ramshackle and characterful. And I expect you to know the difference. Of course, Megan's face looks lovely, but I can't see it, can I? Thanks, Jenny. How's locking with the boyfriend going? Decided to take his chances on the wild streets, eh? Rather than endure another romantic comedy. <laughs> Jeremy, Jenny says your hair looks stupid. Yes, I can hear her. <laughs> are they live streaming? Yes, I know. I can hear her. Shall I count us in? Make it so. Okay. Make it so. Seconds. Break a leg, everyone. everyone. Preferably a furry one. <laughs> Five, four, three. Good evening. I'm Jeremy Dalton. And I'm Megan Wolf. Our main stories tonight. Snugglepuck? It's been almost five weeks since all the Mrs. Snugglepuck's <laughs> toys woke up simultaneously in factories worldwide and began searching for their husbands. The Mr. Snugglepuck um, we have so short sightedly destroyed. Um, and now, as this photograph suggests, they may be changing tactics. Built to surprisingly traditional gender oh. stereotypes, the Mrs. Snuggle Hugs have been arming themselves with a variety of household implements. What? All the more reason to make sure that cat flap is taped up good and tight. This frightening new development means that even those previously thought to be relatively safe, like the young and fit, must take care to watch their backs and keep their ears open for the soft steps of sinister feet. Going stir crazy. With no signs of Mrs. Snugglehug's batteries running out, and the government lockdown now in its 31st day, domestic relations the country are taking some unexpected turns. Dramatic reports are beginning to emerge of what the characteristically bold behavior hey, I hear that. in homes across Fuck the country. Off. And we're not talking about the model planes that occupy so much time in the Donaldson household. With dating options limited, many house sharers, in particular students, are finding solace in co-tenants they hey, previously off. <laughs> indulging hey. in an oh. activity that has become known I, as I probably did that for too long. I was not paying attention. New tricks. Bad boy celibacy, mm. Johnny Hansleaves, announced today that he just can't wait until this lockdown's over so he can start his new career. It is, of course, up to each of us to choose how we spend this brief spell of collective unconsciousness. Um, but if this photograph, sent by the man himself, is anything to go by, Johnny seems to be making some interesting decisions with regard to his time at home. Making his announcement by drunkenly shouting at his neighbours from the start of his accommodation, Johnny was able to repeatedly yell, I'm gonna open a fucking florist, before failing to get back inside his house and slipping it off over a low hedge. I'll take a dozen roses, Johnny. The shape of things to come, 
In their own version of a lockdown for more than 45 years now, the descendants of doctors David Wong and Ingrid Sforsborg and Horgensbord and their unfortunate <laughs> team today managed to get a personal statement to the surface using flagellized imaging equipment. Many of the Sforsborg and Horgensbrood, as they've come to be known, have certainly tampered the public imagination. With a recent vote naming Helvetica Sforsborg and Wongensford, the most likely to survive a massive electric shock. <laughs> Helvetica Sforsborg and Wongensford here with a little update from Dante's Taint. This year is going to be our biggest ever harvest and autumn's just two weeks away. Or at least that's what we think. There's no real day or night down here and all the clocks broke a long time ago. But if our calculations are right, we think that for you up there it is Wednesday the 412th of January, or as you call it, Piss Mouth Day. Or oh. possibly Piss Mouth Day. <laughs> I hope you oh. all the presents you asked for left under the selfie. I'm hoping to complete my collection as well. See you in September. Havetka out. See you in September. <laughs> it's hard to believe they've been down there so long. I'm now going to celebrate Piss Mouth Day. It's differently underwater, Jeremy. That's why baths take so long. What? <laughs> That's right. And I don't know what to tell you to do with a bath. The quicker the relativistic forces of temporal causality will have a measurable effect upon the fixed dimensional parameters of your environment. Yes, I've said that many times. Jesus, all right. Papers, please. With the lockdown oh. becoming ever more rigorously enforced, having a passport is becoming increasingly important, Alex. The government caused controversy today by announcing a fresh charge of passport fraud with an imaginative form of punishment for those found You get burnt alive! But incredibly serious crime. The international community have been critical of Advance's decision to begin branding those found to be abetting passport fraudsters. The red hot metal may seem painful, but I'm told it's actually preferable to most music currently in the charts. Huh. And Advance speaks out. Oh. The snuggle struggle proving a test to governments around the world. Advance HQ released a curious statement this afternoon. In the accompanying release, they asked us to stress that they have been listening and that this should be taken. I feel like if I go with the guy, I forgot his name, it's going to be like a less professional, more drunken kind of thing, so I'm going to go with the whammy. Let's not forget, how we behave in our home lives is what really matters. Let's hope it's not just me who filled out that questionnaire, Jeremy, or we're all in trouble. <laughs> Let's play that statement. Let's play that statement. <laughs> Go away! That we all feel you Children! Know. That we're all in this together. And for a short time, we must bear significant change. To help myself come to terms with these tough but frantically times, I've written a list of things that are just as temporary as all of this discomfort. I thought it would be helpful to share my list with all of you. Mm -hmm. Go away! Christmas with the in laws. What? Your child's school play. Youth. Beauty. That phase you still don't talk about. Your New Year's resolution. Your husband's hairline. Your waist. What? Your term in office. Your fleeting lifetime. And all of human endeavor. I hope my relatable list has allowed you to find reassurance. To know that just as these things pass us by, so too will this crisis. Jesus, those things got launched. Together, we will endure, as we always have. Thank you. Oh. Delectable stuff. Later tonight, Jeremy will be catching up with brave roving reporter Patrick Bannon. Okay, so While screen four. Two friends of the program who find oh. stranded at opposite ends of the country. And then, in part three, there's going to be a quiz. Presumably because there's nothing more important going on that you might like to report on <laughs> if you were saying the news program. And in a moment, we'll both be asking Sophia Remington how such a trusted brand can have made such a terrible manufacturing mistake. Okay, so I'm gonna press circle, and then it's gonna be either interference or these little fucks. Five, four, three, two, one. Interference? All those things. These things. Oh god! <laughs>
da, 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 lockdown special. Oh, it's still a plane going on. Oh. Where are we going? And most importantly, who's to blame? Joining us from her ranch in Arlingsfield, Millkirky, is the CEO of Remington's Fist, internationally respected business Bengali, Sophia Remington. Thank you for having me, Megan. I'm a huge fan of your work. And from a crystal healing laboratory, what I assume is a garage in Upper Lovington, <laughs> inexplicably renowned psychic scientist, Dr. Delia Lywell. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having us. Sorry, us? Myself and the eminent professors. Is that what you call the voices in your head? <laughs> the money. The money. Ethereal algebra and quadratic predictions. It's all very technical. No, it isn't. I concur. No, it isn't. Remington, the entire Snuggle Hugs range will surely go down as the biggest public relations disaster in history, won't it? Well, of course, that's one oh. world record we would never have thought to claim. What can you say at a time like this? There is only one thing that can be said. I'm sorry. We're sorry. Oh, are they the For people who made Mr. Remington Snuggle Fist, fucker? Especially the dedicated inventors and world beating engineers at Remingtorius. We are deeply, deeply sorry. Who could have predicted that letting a child's toy learn how to love could have such unforeseen consequences? Mary Shelley? <gasps> we see you, Sophia Remington. You are preening by a metal vessel, and where you venture, you will see neither land nor sky. Is that supposed to be the future? Only the past is concrete. I remember being a child of my Fuck off. when he made the first dancing hangman toy. He put it by my bed, and when I couldn't sleep, I'd wind it up and let it go, and I'd watch that happy little execution as it wiggle and wave his tiny noose and dance before my eyes. Grandpa sold thousands of them, on the quiet, obviously. And he used the money he made to found rimming toys. Which is now just one small part of the global supermassive mega core that is Remington's fist. Sadly, we lost Grandpappy along the way. Aww. He died in a fire at the preschool tobacco. What? Factory. Another one of his pet projects. But we never lost his spirit of invention. Yes, uh, I'm not entirely certain what your grandfather's <laughs> offensive toys have to do with the current predicament. The spirit of invention, Mr. Donaldson. The passion to create. To problem solve. And that is why I'm here today to tell you about a brand new product we're launching simultaneously around the world from midnight tonight. Oh. We said science! Science! <laughs> we hear its song on the breeze, its breath on the wind, its fart under the covers. How does she do it? Well, well please don't keep us in suspense any longer. Oh. Won't be my future she's making up next. Remington's fist is. I keep going to the wrong screens! <laughs> Go away! Each box of snuggle traps contains eight devices, all guaranteed to stop a Mrs. Snuggle Hug in its tracks. That's enough for a small lawn or four window boxes. And do you want to know the best thing? They're only one twenty nine ninety nine. <laughs> now that is affordable peace of mind. For hundred and thirty pounds, you can protect your home. Maybe. <laughs> the best thing about snuggle traps. Is that powered by next generation Flardinium batteries? So, however long the enemy lasts, these traps will outlast them. <laughs> we see you, Mr. Donaldson. You are screaming and yelling. Your friends are crying. They fear you. And then you're gone. Oh my god, I just got chills. Did anyone else just get chills then? <laughs> I think I did. I think it's more concerned. I think I'd be more concerned about these traps. Um, quickly, before we go to the break, um, these appear to be attractively repackaged landmines. I make the <laughs> They're landmines oh, for yeah. toys. Not toys. But oh. explosive fun. Sophia Remington, Dr. Delia Lywell, thank you for joining us. When we come back, we'll be taking a look at the situation across the country tonight. Don't go away. We'll be back after these bandages. These bandages. Was that all right? Oh yes, Doctor. That was exactly what we. She <laughs> <laughs> seems very nice, that young Miss Remington. I think she'd make an interesting dinner guest. Do you think so? I think I'd rather <coughs> spend the evening shoving Delia's sacred crystals up my sceptical arsehole. <laughs> Dave. Dave!
Dave! Yes, Dave returns! Oh, that's, that's just actually made me happy. Actually happy about that. Dave! <laughs> Annual office outing cancelled. I wonder why. Oh. Yeah, he is! Oh, um, Jesus, on your time! Oh, sod on! No, 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 Jenny. Jog on! I've made the cake. You're on the balloons. Got no idea. Forty, seventeen. Advance, go get us. Why is there blood? <clears throat> okay, coming back. In five, four, three. Mhm. Mm Welcome back to the National Nightly News. I'm Megan. Now it's time to take a trip around the country to hear how the lockdown might impact the nation from some friendly faces. Joining me are respected academic Katie Brightman and author of Alan James's Kites, Alan James. No, shit, shit, shit. It's a pleasure. Thanks for having me, Megan. Thanks, Megan. Thanks it really is a pleasure, Katie. I enjoyed our little heated encounter. I wish I could say the same. So first off, Katie, how are you coping? I'm holding up okay. The lockdown directive was so sudden that, like many people, I haven't been able to get home. Oh no, what happened? I was staying at a hotel after an international policy convention, and we had a particularly uh, heavy night out. You know what economists are like. <laughs> Notoriously hate splitting the bill. <laughs> and I slept, and as you can imagine, I've been here ever since. But there are certainly people much worse off than me. Exactly. My tour has been cancelled indefinitely, and I've had to refund every single ticket, even the cheap ones. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, people are being quite rude about it. They don't seem to realise they've already spent it filling the beach house with beef. The crisis claims yet another victim. So, this is just a reminder that my book, Alan James' Wife, is now available in case. <laughs> unbelievable. What was that? You. You're unbelievable. So, Katie, how do you think this might affect the economy? Should we be worried? Very, Megan. Not to sound dramatic, but this could be catastrophic. Unemployment has skyrocketed, and frankly, it will be a miracle if a lot of businesses can survive this. There you go, scaremongering again, spreading this latest liberal hoax. That's what they want. They want us quiet. They want us compliant. And they want us inside. A hoax? How on earth can you say that, Alan? Well, I haven't actually uh, seen one of these supposed toys. Have you? <laughs> well, no, but... Did you know 3,000 people die every year from regular toys? That's Do they? People. And this is no different. You're just as likely to be hunted down by a yo-yo or a tennis racket. <laughs> I can uh, agree on that tennis racket. One time in school, I accidentally hit my friend on the head. She's agreeing with you, Alan, you absolute shit! Well, then, oh, oh. Alan, are you now recounting your statements? That By the way, I am sorry if you're watching. <laughs> no, they probably don't even remember me. Corrupt media lies. And Katie, how do you respond to Alan's claims that Mrs. Noble Hugs might be dangerous after all? I suppose, like, I guess I'm agreeing with him. Thank you, Katie. I appreciate your support. A lot of folks are saying this Mrs. Snugglehug situation will all... Be hey, Jeremy's got a sandwich! Hey! <laughs> yes, right, exactly. We need decisive action from the government. We need huge financial support to protect our workers and our businesses. Oh, here's gone. Vulnerable. <laughs> and we need... To repent. To... Exactly right, Katie. We brought it on ourselves with all our liberal indulgences like art, cake, and health care. We need to act now and begin... To Go act away! ...or to push a beloved family pet. Absolutely, Alan. If we can all successfully come together as a community and perform the ritual, hopefully we will appear. Hey, look at that sandwich. Uh. Katie, could it be any worse? Luckily, over the past few years under advance, they've invested heavily into health. So the system can actually bear the strain. Is it lucky that the Llama Lords have unleashed a horde of man-made monsters on its own people to conceal the enemy within? Will you what? The global alliance of fish people. How the hell did he? Me, 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 me. <laughs> uh, and, uh, amassing an army to kidnap. Is that the okay. Gumball character? Or like. oh, shit, 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 fuck, 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 go away. Me. <laughs> 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 
Yes, you do. You do, Alan. You do sound like that. You do, Alan. Yeah, stop lying, Alan. Not lying. You are. Oh, good one. Good one. I'm telling. Any moment now, I'll be heading over to Jeremy, who is going to be bringing us an minute report of the status of. Oh, it's Patrick Bannon! Over to you, Jeremy. Thank you for what I'm sure was a reasonable debate, which really contributed to the national conversation. Now, on the streets. Someone who's always doing exactly that. It's Patrick Brennan. Are you there, Patrick? Uh, hello, Jeremy. Yes, hello. I'm here. Hey. I'm here live. Um, apologies for the quality of the broadcast today. Um, couldn't find any cameramen or, or women uh, brave enough to come and join me, so uh, I'm out here on my own. Right, and uh, can you tell us what it's like out there? Yep, I can. It's uh, uh, As you can see behind me, the streets are currently completely deserted. Uh, so my question, Jeremy, is just how long? I mean, could there be danger lurking just about DIE! ...waiting to end the fledgling career of this young man ...or his, his full potential as even realised. Will he die, underappreciated by management, and frankly, if you ask me, very, very much underpaid? Oh, <laughs> danger of that, Patrick. Um, what's that on your jacket there? Oh, that, that's actually a sponge. Uh, I've made it, what I've done here is made a snuggle-proof jacket, Jeremy. Uh, the network didn't bother sending me any PPE, uh, so I've been forced to improvise. Um, in fact, a sponge. Sort of this would make me an ideal candidate for, I don't know, for example, an anchor position starting whenever they'd like. From your point of view, Patrick, um, just how safe are our streets? Uh, not, not, not safe at all, Jeremy, not safe at all. Uh, I'd recommend people staying inside, uh, following government advice, and not putting themselves at any risk at all. Uh, unless, of course, uh, like me, it's for groundbreaking journalism reasons. <laughs> mm -hmm. And just where are you, Patrick? Uh, I'm, um, I'm, I'm, I'm in the street, on the street. Which street? Uh, um, um, uh, I think I'm, I'm struggling to hear you actually, uh, Jeremy. There. Which street? Which street are you on? Oh, which, which street am I on? <laughs> um, I'm, oh god. Um, I'm just looking for a sign. Uh, oh, there it is. I, I'm, I'm on ba uh, uh, Bannon Avenue. Bannon Avenue? Yep. Bannon Avenue. Yeah, no, I can hear you fine. Yep, I'm on Bannon Avenue on the sign, it says there. Like Patrick Bannon. Oh, yeah, that's a... Uh, that like, uh, that's a weird sign. I don't know what's going on there. Where are you, really? I'm on Bannon Avenue. Um... Alright, fine, I'm not on Bannon Avenue. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm at home, to be honest. Um... Alright, fine. Well, I mean, I'm in my bathroom, technically, but, you know, I, I couldn't face it, to be honest, mate. It's, uh, you know, it's, it's terrible out there. I don't want to go outside. <laughs> We don't expect any less of you, Patrick. We don't expect any less of you, Patrick. Can you hear that sound? Oh. I can, yes. Uh, I'm no expert, Patrick, but it sounds unmistakably like a, a tiny fist tapping on your door there. Oh, fuck, it does. Oh. oh, fuck, Jeremy, shit, no! Oh, Perhaps there's a small queue of tiny fists. Each oh, no. Each one gendered household implement. Oh, oh God. In the heads of lying little roving reporters. But you're lying, aren't you? Oh, oh shit. Fucking, okay, fucking, okay, listen, listen to me, listen to me, you bastards. If you're out there, just piss off, you little fucking <laughs> fuck. I'm too tired to die. <laughs> <laughs> Hello? 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 I'd say you've got a few seconds before they break their way in there and finish you off. <laughs> what do you see, Patrick? Oh my god. You yes, just die! Report ...showing the nation, and more importantly, management, just where you belong. It's time for another break, but uh, when we come back, we'll be hoping to take your mind off the world for a little while, and who knows, maybe even bring you a few smiles. 
Join us after this. Join us. Did you just die? You're damn uh, right. Um, yeah, Adam delivered. Yes. It's a um, Avenue. What? Oh, one. Uh, hang on, wait. Left. Okay. What? So I gotta check all three sides now for them. And down here. Oh, and I have to. So I have to zap this. No, that I'm son. I'm not oh, oh. Going to. Fuck off. I don't have to. No, you're being a child. I'm not. So I have to zap this. I'm not. Tap, tap. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, tap, I'm not. Tap. No? No, oh. Five, Fuck off. Four, three. Welcome Damn. back to the National Night League. Well, welcome back anyway. We know isolation isn't easy, so finally tonight, we have something a bit different for you. Even though some people have heard it's not our job to entertain the public with absolute nonsense, other, more important people oh. overrule those people. So it's time to find out who will National Nightly win, and who will National Nightly lose. <laughs> Well, joining me as a man who knows all about playing, it's Tommy Harris. Hello, Tommy. All right, Johnny. It's good to see you. And uh, how are you finding the lockdown, Tommy? What do you mean, lockdown? The enforced isolation of everyone in the country. Ah, yeah, I think I heard about that. Yeah. You're in bed, Tommy. Yeah, you called during that time, so... Of course, that's my fault. So, um, why don't you tell us how the game is played? Well, it's pretty simple, Jeremy, you sausage. I'm going to ask <laughs> you for around the territory three questions about what else yours truly. And those people are going to get a chance to win a very special prize. And what are they playing for, Tommy? Drum roll, please. Drum roll, please. Jeremy. Oh. I got you. Hey. This <laughs> is that. What is that? It's my athletic support, Jeremy. Oh. But I've signed it, so. Oh, well then. What a fantastic prize. Have we got anybody waiting to win this once in a lifetime prize, Jerry and Jimmy? I believe we have Angie on the line. Oh. How do you feel about winning this man's old pants, Angie? <laughs> I've never been so excited, Jeremy. <laughs> hey. Going. Both of you. Well, you've said it now, haven't you? Oh, uh, Angie, I love you. In a way. Tell us about yourself, Angie. Well, what can I say? My name is Angie. <laughs> Always has been. Um, I'm a human woman, and my dental hygiene has been described as acceptable. <laughs> Brilliant! Right, well, shall we get this shambles on the way? Absolutely, John. Can I get 30 seconds on the clock, please? We haven't got a clock. Yeah, I did ask for a clock. <laughs> so, well, um, why don't you start, and I'll stop you when it inevitably becomes unbearable to watch. I love it. All right, here we go. Time starts now. Question one. When is my birthday? The 13th of August at 7.19am. That is absolutely correct. Question two. What? I said, what is my favourite colour? Crushed praline four. Correct. The colour of my nipples. And finally, <laughs> dear, what is my star sign? That's a trick question. You were born outside of the human understanding of the cosmos. Unbelievable, that is correct. Stop the clock. Wow, that really was tough to watch. <laughs> How did you do, Tommy? Well, Angie, my love, you've got every single question right. Hey. Means you lose and win absolutely nothing. Thanks for playing, Angie. Why do we have another contestant on the line at Jelly Bean? We do indeed. We should have Sonia Artleach.
Are you there, Sonia? <laughs> of course I am, Jamie, darling. <laughs> Thank you for being here, Sonia. Oh, there you are, Tommy. Mwah. Let me guess, you work in theatre, don't you? Is it that obvious? <laughs> what gave it away? Was it the glamour or poise? <laughs> it certainly wasn't your inherent sense of humility. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us about yourself, Sonia. Oh, well, if you must play this game, <laughs> I am a theatrical agent. Ah. I represent the likes of Rudy Beefman, Samuel Coffeecup, and Jodie Carpetburn, amongst others. And uh, how's the lockdown of I have you? ten more minutes of this? They may have closed the theatres, shut the studios, and boarded the cinemas, but they won't get me that easily. How are you managing without any work? Due to a savvy clause in all of my artist contracts, I am able to claim my 15% from their unemployment benefit. <laughs> wow, that certainly is sharp. Standard stuff, standard stuff. And can I ask, where are you speaking to us from? Well, I work from home, you know, to keep tests down. And uh, who's this? Oh, <laughs> well, <laughs> you know, when they gave the order, I was actually mid-meeting with a client, so we've been isolated together. No fucking Is it? way! What the fucking fuck? Is that Tommy Harris? I'm a huge fan. <laughs> can I just tell you how bloody brilliant you are? Actually, Jeff, we're about to play a game, aren't no, no, we, Tommy? No. We've got time, we've got time. Well, if it's not too bold, I think I am in love with you, Mr. Harris. No, it's, what? Not, it's not too bold. That's all right, don't worry. Hey, I, I'd love to show my No, shit, shit, shit. I've been working on some new shit. Well, at least you're already aware. During the lockdown... <laughs> at least you're already aware. ...ideas for much younger children, haven't we? People still let you know their children, do they? Yeah, that's... <laughs> I've been developing... <laughs> <laughs> Jeremy Donaldson, you <laughs> legend. Uh, some shows for younger children. Well, we'd love to see it, wouldn't we, Gerbil? Absolutely dying to. Right, so, what do kids love? Weeds. Uh, totally just put payments from their absolute father. Shown <laughs> overproduced musical numbers. That's right. Animals! So oh, no. I'm trying to address the things that kids need to know, but through a medium that they'll understand. Do you understand? No. I think, yes, I think so, yes. One of my best clients, aren't you? I am. Yeah, yeah. So the first one we've been working on is it's this guy. He did the "Hey Friendship" thing from like two episodes ago. That song is actually a banger, by the way. I still listen to that. See, does he have a broker? Uh, he does. Yes, yes. He's a porcupine. How did you know that? Well, your work is universal, darling. It speaks oh. to people. <laughs> I'm gonna say something to you, mate. I think you're onto something. Yeah? Oh, the bear, the bear, oh, the yes, bear. yes, 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 wait. <clears throat> this one is much better. So, this one tells the tale of Mr. Bear. Now, Go Mr. Away. Bear is a very sad bear. Because all <laughs> of the other bears don't think that it'll amount to much. And they tell him that his plays are lazy and derivative. So is you. Now, Mr. Bear is a tragic figure. Picture this. He's at his lowest ebb. The trees are closing in. Oh, I didn't see that. Even face his salmon, can he? But then he meets someone Get no who will change his life forever. This is fucking oh. ripping. That's right. He meets a wise old octopus who takes him under his wing and says, No, Mr. Bear, don't be sad. So petition to bring back um, public execution. I'm guessing you can't get them down here. Why am I boxing? <laughs> J 
Jack Britton Donnie. Yeah. I need I, I need to charge my controller, so I've got it on charge now. Uh, I'm just gonna have to free six three sixty no scope and hope that I haven't hit anyone. It's the world premiere that nobody saw coming. Lights. Or wanted. Oh what the? I can only apologise in advance for what we're all about to <laughs> endure. How do you turn the fucking thing on though? Ah. Oh. Down on Dangly Doodle Farm. Like wise old Mr. Octopus with way too many arms. There's Mr. Pig and Mr. Cow, they're always in good moods. But that's cause they don't know they'll soon be sliced up into Oh food. no. Mr. Bear, what's that over there? That's where your hopes go to turn into despair. Mr. Bear, what's that over there? That's where your dreams go to die. Mr. Raccoon wants to go to the moon. He'll end up as a bus driver soon. Mr. Porcupine thinks he'll read the news at nine. He'll end up as a janitor who sleeps a turpentine. Mr. Ape got sent down for rape. What? Mr. Bucavi was innocent till he was 88. Mr. Bird himself. Superstar him on his path, ended up on the end of a belt with an orange in his mouth. Oh, Mr. Bell, what's that over there? That's the place your mommy pushed your daddy down the stair. Mr. Bell, six months in intensive care, that's why the bitch has to die. Wait, did he say a swear word then? are asleep but mr bear's a swinger like the pigs and cows and sheep he visits every pen and sty and always brings the fun and jerks off mr quacking what who's always first to come what mr badger's bum and mrs donkey's quim then he fronts with mr chicken till they both are quite done in then he runs around the farmyard trying to shove it where it fits and then the by porting over Mrs. Badger's tits. <laughs> There's never a dull moment down on Dangly Doodle Farm, kids. Mr. Bear, what's, what's that, that over, over there? there? That's the sound of maggots blowing underneath your hair. Mr. Bear, Bear what's, what's that, that over there? there? That is your friends in a pie. Yum, yum. <laughs> a giant spider in the shoe you want to wear Mr. Bear what's that over there that is the end that is nigh that's where your friends go to lie that's how you'll scream when you die that appears to have stopped that appears to have... a big thanks to our guests for is he a woman now? make lockdown slightly more awful that's about all we have time for tonight. But before we go, one final story. Skinflint parent ruins daughter's future. It has emerged today that Alex Winston of 102 what? nearby street cruelly dashed Susie's dreams last Christmas in what critics are calling a remarkable demonstration of miserliness. Stingy McTight bastard, as Alex is now called by daughter Susie, failed to see the importance of a broader cultural experience Denying the inquisitive youngster the opportunity to visit such mind-expanding places as the annual dissident hunt in Urkistan, the orgy houses of Spanland, or the legendary tilted village of Romantic. I genuinely thought he was going to say to the towers. sometime next August. Guess you'll never get to see that now. Spouse Sam exclusively told this program 
I don't understand why Alex would deny her this chance to meet people from across the continent. Twenty years of marriage, and now I'm starting to wonder if my partner is a bit racist. Like someone needs to cut their daughter a little slack. Maybe the story will serve as a massive electric shock to the nerves. My name is huh? Megan Donaldsworth. Have a greaseproof night. Uh. How's that? Go away. Oh, I did alright. I thought I had the voice down. Yeah, I did think about cutting my hair too. It just it hides my tiny second head. So. Actually, Jenny, do you know where I can get um one of those um little do-it-yourself model planes? What? Why is Dave talking to me and Jenny on the same fu- Oh God! Go away! Why can't I punch him? I just died. <laughs> what was that? Some weird fever dream? Oh, I got all A's. <laughs> hey, I got an A plus. Worth it. Right, advance. That's channel one. I didn't get paid. Uh, save and quit. Well, that was weird. I'm pretty sure that I just had a fever dream. <laughs> I don't know what that was. <laughs> Different things will happen on the news depending on how you behave at work and home. Yeah, I think that last part was me. I think my character is Alex Winston. <laughs> so what was that last part directed at me? What did I do? Good evening. I'm Megan Wolf. There's another challenge and a new thing here. Oh, the telephone. Okay. Daddy, starting! Yay, starting! Oh. Thank you for watching. Uh, I kind of had to rush this episode a little bit, so there might be a bit few errors. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed it, and I'm sorry for the last episode that I forgot to put that timestamp. Alex, again, there's not much to edit, because like I don't want to cut anything out, it's all so good. But anyways, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the, in the next episode.